Are you tired of null reference exceptions and unexpected crashes due to uninitialized variables? There is a very handy feature in C Sharp called Nullable Reference Types. This will help you catch this before it becomes a problem. Welcome to this video. My name is Philip Eckberg, and today we'll be looking at Nullable Reference Types in C Sharp. I believe that most of us have probably had applications crashing due to null reference exceptions. If not, it's really just a matter of time before it happens to you. A null reference exception often occurs when you try to access properties or call a method on what you believe is an instantiated object. To allocate a new instance of a reference type in C Sharp, you use the keyword new. This will make sure that your reference type has been properly allocated and stored in memory. As a little side note, did you know that in C Sharp 9, it becomes a little bit easier to create an instance of an object? With this new language feature, you don't have to explicitly declare what type you want to create an instance for. If the compiler can figure it out for you, that is. Anyways, Back to talking about references and reference types. If you declare that you want a variable of a reference type, but don't initialize it before you try to use it, you will get a compiler error. However, consider that you're calling a method that returns a list of people. It might, in fact, return null. Returning null means that it doesn't really point to any memory. Thus, when you try to access properties or call methods, there's nowhere to go and you'll have a null reference exception. Because the reference is null. Let's introduce an example. We have a method here for taking attendance of people in the classroom. If there's no one attending the lecture, not only will I be crying, but we'll also get a null as a result. This could be considered bad application design, as it would be much more appropriate to return an empty list. Although this is pretty common, so we'll proceed with this implementation. I guess in a perfect world, we wouldn't have to worry about nulls, which would ultimately get rid of all the null reference exceptions. Although if you simply replace all the nulls in your application with an arbitrary default value, you might still end up having unexpected behaviors across your entire application. We've now got the attendance for people in the classroom. We're storing this in a local variable that we call people. Consider that we want to print a nice summary of all the people that are attending our class. We're going to do this in a new method because we want to keep the code clean. We'll expect a list of people being passed into this method. And we start iterating through each item in the list and print the name of each attendee. I'm sure this looks very similar to your code and my code, and it's really nothing wrong with it. The only problem here is that when we run the application, it will in fact get a null reference exception and crash. I don't really want to downplay this problem. It's in fact a pretty big issue and we should probably get to fixing it. The most common approach to solve these problems is to introduce null checks everywhere in the application. In this very basic application, finding those places is easy. In larger, more complex scenarios and applications, it might be a little bit trickier. To help us find these potential problems, I'd like to introduce a language feature that was introduced in C Sharp 8 which is known as the nullable reference types. Nullable reference types is really what this entire video is about. It will enable you to quicker find the potential null reference exceptions. I'd like to explain nullable reference types like a nullable value type. You know you can just append a question mark to an int, double, or any other value type. 
This would mean that this value type could now be null. Nullable reference types allow for sort of the same thing, but with reference types and the fact that when enabled, the reference types will all be non-nullable by default. To enable this language feature, we have a few different options. We can enable it for the entire project by opening the csproj file, or we can navigate the menus inside Visual Studio. We then set nullable to enable. This will now change the way the compiler looks at the reference types. They are now going to be assumed to be non-null by default. This here is a drastic change and means that the compiler will now warn you every time it detects something that's null or a potential null reference exception. Currently, the only issue that the compiler finds is with the null value we return from attendance. To fix this issue, we have two options. Either we make sure that we don't return null, <laughs> hence we create an instance, although that might change what the consumer of this method expects it to return. If we simply change it to return an empty list, other things in the application might break. And to be honest, this isn't where the null is the problem. To get rid of this warning, we can instead indicate that the method may return a null value. We do this the same way that we indicate that a value type, like an integer, can be null. We add the question mark. Changing the signature of the method to nullable list of person means that we may get a null or an instance of a list. It does not indicate that each element in the list can be null. If we'd like to indicate that the list can be null, as well as each element in the list could be null, we'd have to change the signature to nullable list of nullable person. I don't see the point in having null elements in the list though, so let's not do that. We can keep it simple for now and simply say that we have a result that is either null or an instance of a list. This now shows a warning at another place in the application. I just want to point out, these are just warnings and not errors. We could turn on a setting to treat warnings as errors if that's something we'd like. Now, the first warning we see here is that we are assigning a nullable list of person to a non-nullable list of person. To fix this warning, we could change the variable type to a nullable list. Or a little bit of a simpler approach would be to use the var keyword. This will automatically have the compiler figure out what type is returned. Now we're left with just one warning, and I don't really want to call the method who is here if the result from the attendance call is null. Therefore, I'm going to add a null check, and I'm gonna print something to the console if there's no one attending my class. If it's not null, we are going to proceed to call the method with the list of people. Notice how the warning is no longer there, it's because the compiler knows that we've performed a null check on the variable that we're using. This here won't always be perfect. And we do have ways to trick the compiler into thinking that we know better. We'll get to that in just a little bit. All right, we've fixed a few warnings, but we're still gonna get a null reference exception. If we check the code for the person class, it has a reference that is not initialized. We might want to be able to create an instance of a person to track attendance without having to ask the person for their personal details. I'm therefore going to allow this reference type to be null, which will remove the warning from the person class. With that changed, did we get a warning somewhere else? Let's have a look at the code where we consume the personal details. You might have guessed this, but we have a warning in the who is here method. This warning is telling us that calling person.details.firstName is a potential null reference exception about to happen. Remember that I said previously 
that we can tell the compiler that we know better? We can use the dammit operator, which is not the actual name for it. It's actually called null forgiving operator. This operator is a simple exclamation mark to say that we know that this definitely won't be null, indicating that the compiler is wrong. Here's another example. Consider this non-nullable reference type. We set it to null, which provides a warning. Then we're going to use the null forgiving operator to ensure the compiler that the value won't be null. <laughs> Do you see the problem here? Sure, the compiler is no longer providing us with a warning, but we can clearly see that this here is going to be an issue. Guess what? The compiler is for the most of the time better at understanding the code than we are. A better approach in this case here would be to use the null conditional operator. This means that if details is null, it won't proceed to get the first name. And we could use the null coalescing operator to print a default value. Let's also have a quick look at the details class. This here is warning us that first name and last name are not initialized. Since these are both non-nullable by default, this is why we are seeing this warning. To get rid of this warning, we could introduce a constructor and require first name and last name to be initialized when we create an instance. While this here got rid of the warning, I don't particularly like this approach, mainly because it will now change the contract for how to consume the details class. This might break a whole lot of usages elsewhere in the solution. Instead, we'll make sure that we allow first name and last name to be null. Therefore, whenever they're accessed and there's a potential null reference exception, the compiler will most certainly provide a warning. And to do this, we'll just mark the strings as nullable strings. As a final improvement to the details class, I'd like to make sure that first name and last name can only be set when we create an instance. However, I don't want to introduce the constructor and enforce them to be set when we create the instance. So how would we do this? This is where another new language feature from C Sharp 9 becomes really handy. We can add something called the init only setters. This simply allows for the set keyword to be replaced by a new keyword called init. You're probably wondering why we'd want to do this. This makes sure that the properties are read only, but can still be set when we use an object initializer. So let's add a person that's attending our lecture. We can indicate that we want a person with a details property set to a new instance of its required type. Look at how beautiful this is when we're using this new expression from C Sharp 9. You can see that we can set the first name and last name properties in the object initializer. If we try to change them afterwards, we get a compiler error. This is because it's only allowed to be initialized once. After that, it's going to be read only. Since the method returns an innumerable, we can use the yield keyword to return a new instance without having to create a list of people. This here is a handy little trick. I'll add another person attending the lecture just to show you how easy this is. Yield is such a forgotten language feature. Understanding that properly is a topic for another video. If that's something that you'd like to see, please do leave a comment below and I'll see if I can get to that later on. As we run the application, it will now show everyone that's attending the lecture. As a side note, the details and the person class are both great opportunities to use a record. If you want to learn more about how to use records and how they work, I suggest that you check out the video on this channel covering that language feature. With all these changes made to the application, we've now successfully gotten rid of potential null reference exceptions. With very minimum efforts, we introduced a language feature that allows for early detection of possible problems. This is a truly great addition to programming in C Sharp. Obviously, we can't get rid of nulls completely, but this is a very good step in the right direction. 
What do you think? If they recreated C Sharp from scratch today, do you think that they'd add nulls to the language? Someone once said that nulls and null reference exceptions have costed the world millions and millions of dollars. If you already have a big solution where you want to use this feature, you may not want to enable this for the entire project. It can be a little bit overwhelming, especially if you suddenly end up getting thousands of warnings. Of course, they're warnings and you should probably attend to them, but to make the process a little bit easier, you can use directives to turn on or off the feature for classes and methods. If you disable nullable reference types for a portion of the code where you've already started using the feature, it will provide you with a warning and tell you that you're using a language feature in a context where it's not allowed. You can also enable nullable reference types for portions of the code if it was not enabled for the entire project. Let's summarize what we've discovered in this video. You can enable nullable reference types on the project level or directly in your code to quicker find potential null reference exceptions. The compiler will provide you with warnings and tell you if there's a potential null reference exception. It's not going to catch every case, but it is going to catch a lot. Reference types are now non-nullable by default. Create a nullable reference type by using the question mark this will allow your variables to be assigned a null value. You can use the null forgiving operator when you know better than the compiler. This indicates that we are certain that the value won't be null. You can use the null conditional and null coalescing operators to better handle potential null references. The compiler will understand if you have null checks in place and won't warn you if it's obvious that the values you're using won't be null. This, my friends, is how to use nullable reference types in C Sharp. I'd love to hear in the comments if you are going to use this feature or if you find it completely useless. Personally, I find this feature extremely useful. If you liked this video, please do leave a like and subscribe to the channel for more videos in the future. You can also check out my courses on Pluralsight where I primarily cover C-sharp topics, such as asynchronous programming. Thanks for watching this video. My name is Philip Eckberg, and today we've been looking at nullable reference types in C-sharp.